now that we've seen a few examples, I want to make a couple remarks. The first is that we just found that the sum of minus 1 to the n times 1 over n converges. However, if we drop the minus 1 to the n, we get the sum of 1 over n, which we already know diverges. So, it's possible for an alternating series to converge, even if the sum of the absolute values diverges. Recall, we have a name for this type of series. They're called conditionally convergent series. Next, notice that the alternating series test didn't give us a way to actually compute the sum, like we would for a geometric series, for example. In general, it's very hard to compute the sum of an alternating series, but there is a way we can estimate the sum. And for the rest of this lecture, we'll talk about how to do this estimation. So let's suppose that we have a convergent alternating series that converges to some number s. Then, as we've seen before, we can approximate s by the partial sums sn. But we would like to get a feel for how close this approximation actually is. And as it turns out, if the series satisfies the condition of the alternating series test, then there is a nice way to estimate the error in this estimation, which we're going to write as rn, which is the difference between s and the partial sum sn. This estimation is given to us by the alternating series estimation theorem, which says that if we have a series which satisfies the condition of the alternating series test, then the error you get in approximating s by sn is less than or equal to bn plus 1. The proof of this theorem is fairly straightforward. We have that the error is equal to the distance between s and sn. However, since the bn's are decreasing, the distance between s and sn must be less than or equal to the distance between sn plus 1 and sn. To see this, think back to the picture we drew when we were talking about the alternating series test. You can see here that the distance between a partial sum and the following partial sum is always smaller than the distance between the partial sum and the limit s. However, let's think about what happens when you subtract sn from sn plus 1 sn plus 1 is the sum of the first n plus 1 terms, and sn is the sum of the first n terms. So, if we subtract sn from sn plus 1, we're really just left with the n plus first term, which is exactly bn plus 1, after taking an absolute value. And this proves the theorem. Now, let's see an example of the alternating series estimation theorem in action. We know that the sum of minus 1 to the n times 1 over n converges. So now, let's approximate the sum of the series with an error at most 10 to the minus 2. So, how will we make the alternating series estimation theorem work for us? The goal is going to be to find an n such that bn plus 1 is less than or equal to 10 to the minus 2. And why would this help? Because then, by the alternating series estimation theorem, we would have that the error in approximating the sum s by the nth partial sum is less than or equal to bn plus 1, which we constructed to be less than or equal to 10 to the minus 2. So, we will have successfully bounded the error by 10 to the minus 2, just like we wanted. Now let's find this n. We set bn plus 1 less than or equal to 10 to the minus 2, and we solve for n to get that n is greater than or equal to 99. So, let's take n is equal to 99. Then, just like we showed above, we have that the error in approximating the sum s by the 99th partial sum is less than or equal to 10 to the minus 2. And so, we have that the 99th partial sum, which is about negative 0.698, is within 10 to the minus 2 of the actual sum. And so we're done. Just a quick note, the actual sum of this series is minus natural log of 2, which is equal to negative 0.693, and so we were pretty close.